that's it. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not, I'm not like I, I gave it a shot again after four years coming back to church and I'm just finished. I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not going back. I'll never come to church again. I'm like, this is exactly why church doesn't work. I've recently been attending church again after four to five years from being involved in church because of a lot of reasons. And Sunday, I'm standing in this new church. It's like the fourth time that I'm back in this church. I'm standing about four rows from the front. We're worshiping. The first song is finished and the pastor stops the worship and he says, I experience there's someone in this crowd that's got a prayer for the nation and they need to come and pray it over the nation for us here in the front. And it was about four days before that, that I was at a cell group for the second time that I just, God just put this prayer for the nation in my heart. That was, I prayed like I've, I haven't prayed in the last five years and it was so burning. And I, I just knew, okay, well, this is for me. I need to go and pray this prayer over the nation. And as I'm about to go forward, I just hear this voice like from, from the accuser coming and saying, stop, you're not a part of this family yet. You've only been here four times. He's asking for someone part of the family. So I sort of like take a step back. I'm like, okay, well, obviously I can't pray because I'm not part of this family yet. I've only been here four times. And um, God says, that's a lie. You are part of this family. Then as I go forward, uh, or just about to go forward, he says, I experienced it's a teenager. So I'm like, okay, well, obviously it's not, it's not me. And we're still waiting for someone to come. And I just feel I need to go and pray, you know, even if he said it's a teenager, I've got this prayer for the nation on my heart. And um, as I'm about to go again, this, this young girl walks up and she, and she prays over the, the, the church and, and over the nation. And, and then the pastor continues the worship. I'm standing in this like I'm, I'm battling and really wrestling with God about what's happening. And he says sort of like, hey, I did put this prayer in your heart for the nation. Go and pray. But I'm like, yeah, but the worship's already on and the moment's passed. And he's like, oh, go and ask him if you can pray. So I say, okay. Sort of step out of my row, four rows from the front, go to the front. And I say, hey man, when you said there's someone with a prayer, I just knew I had to pray. But then the devil came and he said, like, you're not a part of this family. You're an orphan because you've only been here four times. You're not a part of this family yet. So you can't pray in this church. And um, I just know that's a lie. So I've got this prayer for the nation. Can I pray it? And he sort of looks at me and he's like, yeah, sure. And um, we're waiting and, and um, he's about to stop the worship again for another prayer set. And then the power cuts. Now I'm sort of standing next to him. I'm, I'm like about to go and pray, but the power cut in the whole church. No UPSs are working. It's dead quiet. Only the lights are on. And I'm about to sort of like, because I can project my voice. So I'm about to go and say, you know, I'll, I'll just pray without a mic. And as I'm about to do that, this, this other girl next to me stepped out and she said, I'll pray without a mic. And um, so she prays over the congregation, over the nation. Um, right after that, the, the pastor's like looking at me. So I thought he's going to call me and like, I'm going to pray now. And he, he calls the girl, the other girl next to me, another one. And she comes and she prays. I'm like, okay, well, obviously they were in the queue before me. I'm going to pray next. And um, the pastor sort of like looks at me and he, as he's about to call me, another pastor gets up from the other side of the church and he walks forward. He walks to the front of the church and he likes, he's got a challenge for the community and, and then he prays over the nation. And he just, the, the, the other pastor looks at me again and he says like, hey guys, so there's stories here about like orphans being returned to family. So just pray that over your friends, pray that over someone that comes into your mind, but we're going to go back into worship. And I just experienced like this massive, massive amount of rejection and, and just the enemy coming and saying, you see, you can't pray in this church because you aren't a part of this family. You can't pray your prayer because you, you're not recognized there. You're not, you're not allowed to be a part of this family. The worship continues and, he, and the pastor comes and stands next to me. And, you know, I would think he would say like, hey, man, sorry, you know, it's not, not this time, maybe next time, something, something like that. But he doesn't say anything. He just comes and stands next to me and like looks at me and then continues worshiping. And I'm just experiencing like this rejection and so much hurt again. And um, I sort of just looked at him and said, okay, well, cheers. And then I walked back to my seat and I sat down there and I just said like, 
that's it. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not. I'm not like I, I gave it a shot again after four years coming back to church, and I'm just finished. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going back. I'll never come to church again. I'm like this is exactly why church doesn't work because you 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 have to be like involved in the church before you're part of the family you know and, and the devil's just putting all of these thoughts in my mind and i'm sitting there on the and i'm just sitting there like no like i'm done and i'm sitting there and i'm, I'm saying like god what why would you do that to me why would you like make me go out and take this step of faith just to say like i'm not a part of the family and I'm sitting there and I'm like, God, why are you doing this? And God's like, well, you said you have a prayer for the nation. I was like, yeah, well, obviously, but there's no chance for me. And he said, pray right there where you're sitting. Pray for the nation. And I'm really hurt and I'm really like just I'm done with this whole church thing. And um, I asked God, well, what am I supposed to pray for? And God said, pray that people don't take offense in the church. Pray that people don't get hurt in the church. And pray that people don't take perspectives and people's opinions wrongly. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, yo. I don't want to, but God's telling me to do it. And I'm praying and I'm just saying like, God, I pray against offense in the church. I pray against hurt in the church. I pray that people will feel welcome that they will be a part of the family even when they don't feel a part of the family and i just stopped like praying and and i realized this is the lie this is the lie that the devil will ride for all the days of your life saying you don't belong you're not a part of the family you're not safe here and god came and he told me he's like you are a part of the family i'm using this whole situation to show you it's not about if the pastor sees you or recognizes you or gives you a space. You are welcome. And I'm praying and, and then I'm like, where, where I went from a place where I was never coming back to this church, where I eventually stood up again, started worshiping again. And then that pastor gets up to preach and I'm like, Yo. but, but God had already dealt with all of that hurt, all of that offense, all of that that I took and and he allowed me like I just moved to a place where I could listen to what he's saying and and really be receptive of what he's saying and, and that's the thing the devil will keep you out of church because of offense and hurt from people and that's not what God says when you pray to God the father it's automatically saying you have a father you are part of a family so I really want to encourage you Take my experience, take what happened. All the offense I felt, all the hurt I felt comes from deep roots many years ago. I was out of church for about four years and now, now God's really journeying with me to get back in because that's part of his heart for us. It's to be part of a family. You are a part of the family. You are not an orphan. You are loved. You have a place in the family and a part of that family is the expression that we experience at church. So I just want to bless you and really pray that that offense isn't something that sits in your heart. That there's no place for pride. There's no place for an offense to come and sit. So just know you are loved.